Saint Nicholas is one of the gifts which the Holy Spirit has given to the Church, a gift that we Orthodox and Catholics continue to share. And so, on the basis of that truth, I set for myself the aim of my preaching this evening. It is to reflect upon Saint Nicholas as a common father, a father shared by Orthodox and Catholics alike. And because we share this one father, Nicholas, together we rightly praise the triune God for what he has accomplished in the life of this holy bishop. Secondly, together we lay hold once more of the shared inheritance that belong to us as sons and daughters of this same Father Nicholas, the great bishop. And thirdly, in this praising and in this reappropriating together, I invite us together to resolve to pursue the path that will, with God's help, and of course only with God's help, the path that will lead to the restoration of full communion between the Greek Orthodox and Catholic churches, so that someday, in the not too far distant future, on St. Nicholas' feast day, we can participate in the one Eucharistic sacrifice of the Divine Liturgy at the one same altar, sharing one bread, one cup. The Liturgy makes it clear that St. Nicholas is an exemplary bishop, a model for all pastors. In the churches of the East and the West, St. Nicholas is revered as epitomizing what every bishop is supposed to be, a father to the Christian people entrusted to his care. And so at Great Vespers, the Church addresses St. Nicholas as a divine shepherd of the most divine holy priesthood great shepherd of his people. Just as the Eternal Father sent his incarnate Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into the world in order to make present the Father's merciful love for the human race, so Christ, in turn, before his ascension in glory to the Father's right hand, sent his apostles, and they in turn their successors, the bishops, to continue this work of mystically, or we in the West would say sacramentally, personifying Christ's service and care for us, his flock. In the West, once, of course, we stripped away all that nonsense about St. Nicholas looking like a jolly old elf. I'm not sure where that comes from. But in the West, our liturgy focuses on the charity of St. Nicholas, his love. That is certainly an essential virtue of a pastor, a spiritual father, of a bishop. But as I prayerfully meditated on the text for this Vesper service, it has become clear to me once more that the Orthodox Church particularly honors St. Nicholas for his wisdom. Above all, his wisdom in giving clear witness at the Council of Nicaea to the divinity of Jesus Christ, his witness against the Arian heresy. And so, for example, St. Nicholas is addressed at Matins for this feast as, O Nicholas, manifestly you protected the Church of Christ with the utmost zeal, refuting godless beliefs and doctrines of heresies, censuring them with candor. And for all you were clearly Orthodox
orthodoxy's rule of faith, and great intercessor for all who would follow your divine teachings and conferences. St. Nicholas is famed for being among the 318 God-fearing fathers of Nicaea, about whom the liturgy affirms that, welding together all knowledge of the soul and examining it together by the Divine Spirit, the Reverend Fathers, all blessed and truly inspired by God, in words inspired, traced out the venerable creed by which they taught that the Word is with the begetter without beginning, and the most surely consubstantial, clearly following the teachings of the Apostles. And so, that's the sense I make of the readings appointed for this Vesper service. Two from the book of Proverbs and one from the book of the Wisdom of Solomon to underscore the fact that in his witness to the divinity of Christ at the Council of Nicaea, St. Nicholas showed himself above all to be a wise father. When the book of Proverbs affirmed in our lesson that Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who acquires understanding. The liturgy is indicating that that man is St. Nicholas. When we heard in the reading, my mouth will utter truth, we understand from the liturgy that the truth is that the Father and the Son are homoousioi, that is the truth. <coughs> And the lie that is the abomination to one's lips is the untruth of Arianism, that Jesus Christ is only a creature. And when we read the text in the liturgy that the mouth of the just man yields wisdom, the liturgy would have us understand that it is the confession of Jesus Christ as true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. But this is the wisdom. It comes from the Holy Bishop Nicholas. Let me then speak a bit about this wisdom of which St. Nicholas was the trustee. First of all, it is a disciple's wisdom. St. Nicholas among all the other, along with all the other fathers at Nicaea, taught us the right answer to the question which Jesus Christ addresses to every Christian. And you, who do you say that I am? Not merely a prophet, though a prophet. Not merely a holy man, though holy. You are the Christ, the only begotten, consubstantial Son of the Father. This is the essential wisdom for every Christian man and woman. Without this wisdom, we would have lost Christ. And as we say in the Latin liturgy at the Paschal Vigil, what good would life have been to us had we not had Christ, had we lost Christ? 